So back to the graceful termination Golang style. So we have a, a set of fibers and a set of channels. And in Golang, what we do is we we intercept the user uh, the request for, for interruption. We then close the URL stream, which is the upstream, uh, the upstream um, channel. And then as a result of that, we propagate the channel closure throughout the entire pipeline. And finally, we notify the main fiber, so the, the leave of the, of the pipeline tree, or if you want, the, the, the terminal nodes of the, of the pipelines, will then notify the main fiber um, to make sure we can actually uh, shut down the application. So the first thing we'll look into is uh, the concept of owning a channel. So this is something I learned in by while reading a book on, on concurrency in Golang. It's the idea that um, fibers should own channels and should be the only one, whoever, gener whoever created a channel should be responsible for closing it. And we'll see how closure of a channel is is pretty important in this in this paradigm. So, in order to get to a place where uh, all of our channels are actually owned by the fibers that create them, we have to restructure our application a bit. Because, as you can see, in our application, we have a set of uh, uh, channels defined at the top that are actually passed into uh, into our fibers um, uh, into our fiber definition. So, when we look at the st status checker, for example, we're passing an input and an output stream, which is fine in, in a set of circumstances, but sometimes it's not what we want. So we'll have to refactor our code a bit to make sure that every fiber in the, in the, uh, in the pipeline actually creates the uh, channel that it's going to publish into. So for example, when it comes to the, to the fiber that we run uh, every time we run every, we want to make sure that the, the the stream we're producing values for, which is the URL stream, is actually generated by the every uh, function itself rather than injected from the outside. We'll see why this is important. So what, what this will look like is, so the idea there is we'll definitely have something like URL stream equals every, meaning that the every function actually returns a stream. And on the other hand, uh, the idea here is rather than defining what's going to happen inside every few seconds, what we do is we just say, just say these are the values that we're going to be generating every few seconds, and these uh, values are going to be injected in the channel generated by every. So we'll have to change the definition of every accordingly. Going back to concurrency util, uh, we now want to return a um, a channel. So everything will start with a channel dot new and the type of the elements we want to generate is t uh, we might want to change this uh, just because so we want to generate a channel of values t in our case it's strings but also uh, so if we go and say we're gonna return rather than returning a, a type t we're gonna return an enumerable of t this is just to make our life easier because that's what uh, we return every time we every time we run a uh, config load URL. So rather than returning a single URL, we're actually returning an enumerable of that, just an array. And so in our every function, we're just going to say, if you give me a block that returns an enumerable, then I actually want you to inject all the values of the enumerable into the channel one by one. We're also going to leverage the uh, tap function, which is the tap method, which is always very handy, and it will allow us to just return the channel we just created, but also to reference the same channel inside the block. Um, so we're just going to call it out stream because that's what it is. So this is the, the stream we are publishing to. And now you'll see things are actually quite, quite simple. So whenever it's time to generate a new value, what we do is we do block call. Now block call will return an enumerable of t. So what we want is actually to push the values into the out stream. Uh, and this is defined as a function here. So what we're doing is uh, we are just running each on the enumerable and pushing each values into, uh, into the channel with channel.send. If, you, uh, if you're very, very um, uh, careful and if you have a keen eye on, on the number of fiber, fibers we're spawning here, you can see that 
the behavior is not exactly the one we had before because uh, earlier on we were waiting for a few seconds then generating a bunch of values and say if that value generation took many minutes uh, we would just stop and wait for uh, until the generation of the value is finished before we go on and um, and do another iteration whereas this time so it would go like uh, wait for a couple of seconds then run the generation of the values and then uh, if that takes a long time you're just going to wait a bit more whereas with this with this new with this new implementation mind that every time we call block call arrow arrow out stream we're actually spawning a new fiber so this guarantees that we're actually spawning exactly one fiber every few seconds or every every period which is okay for now just mind just be mindful that if whatever this operation is about is long running this might lead us to a situation where we are generating a lot of uh, fibers that are not going to terminate by the time the period is over but for the time being let's say we're happy with this okay so uh, let's recap so every now creates a channel this is going to be our url stream and it just injects each value of the config uh, of the load config into our out stream and i think this is a good uh, first step to go back and try to compile So you can see how now every is returning a channel and this channel is then passed into the next um, into the next fiber and I also want you to mind that this is what I mean by having a channel owning uh, being owned by a particular fiber so the the fiber defined inside uh, every actually owns has control of the of the channel it returns and it's also going to be the one the one closing it now what does it mean to close a, a channel where it well it's as easy as this so we we in every we loop through a um, um, bunch of um, we loop through a bunch of values that are um, generated every few seconds whenever we get an interrupt from the user we're actually going to break and what I want to make sure of is that whenever that happens the fiber will actually call close on on the uh, on the channel so what I'll do is I'll, I'll use ensure to make sure we do outstream.close which means that whenever we break we're gonna run this piece of code which is outstream.close and that's uh, going to change how downstreams channel are gonna react to the termination sent by the user input so let's run the application again you're going to see some exceptions coming up and we'll talk about why that is the case in a second right in the meantime we can think about how okay so the application is running we're going to press ctrl c and see what happens and there you go you can see there is quite uh, this is the opposite of a graceful termination as you could agree and you can see there's an exception being raised which is channel closed error now this ex exception comes from the the fibers downstream of the URL stream in this particular case it's definitely the workers the status the status checker workers so what we'll do is we'll try to handle that that closure and this is actually the next bit that I wanted to talk about